Welcome. We are going to explore the history of the pencil, its influence on literacy and education, as well as its impact on society. ETEC 540 Text Technologies, The Changing Spaces of Reading and Writing, UBC. Video Documentary by Gurpreet Kuhner and Carolee Hoyano. The Story of the Lead Pencil. Do you know the history of the pencil? Can you imagine a life without this tool? Sit back and enjoy a history lesson that explores this device in its entirety. The pencil is a simple tool that many frowned upon when originally introduced. Much like computers to modern day times, the pencil carried so many unknowns. The wonder of if this tool would be useful and actually show improvements in learning and development, or if it would be a risky trend that would alter thinking and cause learners to rely too heavily on this new device. We can now look back and concretely prove that the pencil was a huge discovery and it molded our learning and improved our education as a whole. Can you imagine where you would be if the pencil were not here? Imagine your life without this tool. What would it look like? We have decided to explore the pencil in more depth and learn about its past as well as its implications on current day education. We have included a clip from The Magic Box, which is comparing computers in modern day to the pencil from the past. Enjoy. Welcome to Sound Print. I'm Barbara Bogue. Consider the pencil. It's an object that is so commonplace, so ubiquitous, so simple, so obvious, it's almost invisible. But as Henry Petrosky lays out in his wonderful 354 page book about the pencil, the history of this little piece of technology, and that's what a pencil is, it's technology, is a microcosm of the process of sophisticated engineering. It took inventive, persistent, even brilliant scientists and captains of industry many years to get the pencil to where it is now, on every desk, in every school child's knapsack, wedged between sofa cushions and forgotten in drawers. Now in the 21st century, there's another bit of information technology you find in every classroom, computers. They cost quite a bit more than pencils, but we consider them pretty much the same way. They are essential. Of course they belong in schools, but producer Richard Paul says that the marriage between computers and education was not a foregone conclusion. On the contrary, it took some extensive social engineering to bring them together. The pencil began in Rome, where they used a device called a stylus to imprint faint but legible writing on papyrus, early form of paper. From there, the discovery of graphite was born. A large graphite deposit was discovered in England in 1564. At first, they wrapped string around the graphite to prevent it from breaking. Then they decided to hollow out wood and slide the graphite down the center. Although graphite had to be cut to fit, so the first pencils were more square. The first place to mass produce pencils was in Germany in 1662. The pencil came to America from overseas, but was cut off because of the war with England, which cut off imports. William Monroe, a cabinet maker from Concord, Massachusetts, is credited as making America's first wood pencil in 1812. Henry David Thoreau discovered how to make a good pencil out of inferior graphite using clay as the binder. This invention was prompted by his father's pencil factory in Concord, Massachusetts, which employed graphite found in New Hampshire. In 1821, by Charles Dunbar. By the end of the 19th century, over 240,000 pencils were used each day in the U.S. The favorite timber of pencils was red cedar, as it was aromatic and did not splinter when sharpened. In the early 20th century, supplies of red cedar were dwindling, so that pencil manufacturers were forced to recycle the wood from cedar fences and barns to maintain a supply. The pencil has seen a variety of changes and developments over the years. We have been able to take a simple tool and shape it in a variety of ways to meet the needs of many professions. Here's just a few of the many shapes the pencil has taken over the years. Graphite pencil. The graphite pencil is used mainly by artists. It comes in a variety of shades as well as hardness, which allows artists to manipulate their depth and details. This is similar to the typical yellow pencil, except it hasn't been mixed with clay. Carbon pencil. This is a mixture of charcoal and graphite, so it allows for smooth lines without the shine. This type of pencil cannot be erased, so it creates a permanent mark on images. This type of pencil doesn't have varying degrees of hardness or shade. It comes as is and is considered for the serious drawer. 
Watercolor pencils. These pencils can be used wet or dry. When wet, they create more of a painting, but in a controlled form as it is a finer, harder tip than, say, a brush. It can also be used dry or applied dry and then wet. These pencils provide a variety of options to please any artist and come in a vast number of colors. Copying pencils. This is a lead-based pencil that also contains a dye. This was meant to copy documents in the 1800s, as copying paper didn't exist. Once more convenient methods of copying came available, people still used the copying pencil as it had a grayish purple color tone and didn't erase, creating a more permanent print. Triangular pencils. These types of pencils are often used for beginning writers, as the triangular fit is easy for the hand to hold. It is also used by professionals as many feel the grip is more comfortable and easier than the typical pencil. Colored pencils. Unlike typical pencils, colored pencils are wax based, which can create a variety of pigment. Colored pencils can also come in water soluble or oil based solutions, which are considered of higher quality. These types of pencils are usually a cheaper solution for artists. Round pencils. These types of pencils have a thicker center which is meant to be longer lasting as well as minimal rounded outside for a comfort grip. Grease pencils. This is a wax based writing tool that is meant to write on different mediums such as glass, porcelain, stone, etc. It is also easy to write on high gloss paper such as photos or x-rays. It is used by many professionals beyond artists, often used by chemists as they can write on glass and beakers. Golf pencils. A lightweight pencil with minimal graphite as it is meant to be small and compact. It also has a clip on the top to easily attach to paper so it doesn't get lost. Charcoal pencils. These are also used for drawing and are considered a more professional pencil. It produces darker, deeper lines and more depth to an image. These come in a variety of shapes and forms, although the wood encased ones are less messy and come with a finer tip to encourage cleaner controlled lines. Reproducing pencils. This type of pencil is a light shade of blue which doesn't need to be erased. It is often used by artists or computer graphic designers as when scanned the blue won't show up, causing them to ink without perfecting their work. It is also often used by comic artists. Mechanical pencils. These pencils can be purchased for a variety of sizes and shapes of graphite. They also allowed users to buy one casing and just replace the lead when it runs out which means no sharp pencils. Bendable pencils, a funky pencil for the young at heart. Carpenter's pencils, these pencils are considered easier to hold with a thick core which allows for drawing or writing on rough surfaces. It also creates a stronger core which prevents the pencil from breaking. These types of pencils are considered more durable and rough which is why they are aimed towards the very hands on trade. Pop a point pencil mechanical pencil that allows a sharp tip without sharpening as well as reusable casing. Just to name a few. The pencil in school. The pencil was introduced into the classroom in the early 1900s. Once the pencil began being mass produced it quickly replaced the chalkboard or slate for student use and paper was its sidekick. Since its introduction there has been a change in self-expression and communication. It has also shown a change in literacy. The pencil and school. Technology affects communication and literacy. The pencil is significantly linked with literacy since it is an authentic writing tool which can be used to strengthen the relationship between reading and writing. We often lose sight of writing as a technology when new technologies such as the computer and telephone surface. We become reliant on the new technology of writing. Individuals are so used to composing virtual text at the keyboard that they find it difficult to make the effort to print or handwrite. Revising, cutting, and pasting become difficult because digitized text is more flexible. The pencil may be an older writing tool, but it is an undeniable example of a communications technology. The pencil has less parts than a computer, but it is an advanced technology. The manufacturing process it requires centers around the concrete relationship between graphite, clay, lead, and cedar wood. The development of the pencil is an example of the development of literacy. 
Since the 250 years or so from its invention, the pencil has experienced changes in form, expanded its functions and developed to a universally active tool for writing. The pencil was not originally invented to be a writing device, it was used to scribe lines. Early pencils had knobs at one end so they could be attached with string to a notebook. Pencils began to be used to write letters to people across the world. However, this was a fairly slow method of communication. The pencil did not escape the madness of educators. One of the major technological was in the early 20th century when an eraser was added to the tip of the pencil. Teachers preferred pencils with erasers because they believed students would do better with revision. Students were taught the writing process and learned that writing was an ongoing process which required editing and revision. Prior to erasers, writing was simply scribbled out. The concept of penmanship was difficult to achieve. Pencils were introduced to education. Some teachers struggled with the crisis of pencil quality as well as classroom management. Before the invention of the pencil, the main tool for writing was quill and ink. It required a good feather and ink to cautiously write letters onto paper. This process was very time consuming and messy. Today, the pencil is used in classrooms every day. The pencil technology is very affordable Employed by a skilled teacher, this technology allows students to persevere. It also builds fine motor skills, hand-eye coordination, critical thinking, and creativity. Today, we live in a computer age, but the benefits of students using a pencil to learn is an idea which should not be forgotten. Research shows that writing can strengthen a child's ability to create and express ideas. When children write, a the brain that handle our thoughts, language and working memory light up on a brain imagery screens. Other studies have found that children in early grades tend to write faster, use more words and communicate a broader range of ideas when writing by hand as opposed to using a keyboard. An Indiana University study revealed a huge spike in brain activity for children who write. This kind of brain stimulation does not occur keyboard because it involves pushing a button to form a letter. Some researchers believe that pencil will be obsolete in 10 years or so. Most individuals in today's generation do not feel the need to use pen or paper. Most are reaching out to laptops or smartphones. Will that mean people will forget how to write? A study states that the average time since an adult wrote by hand out of the 2,000 participants, about two-thirds say they rarely write, and when they do write by hand, it is only quick, please scribbled reminders or notes. More than 50% of the people admit that their handwriting had noticeably declined, and one out of seven participants revealed that they were ashamed of their handwriting. The advanced mobile devices have ensured to simplify typing even further by adding methods like predictive text. Among the participants of the survey, 4 out of 10 people said they rely on predictive text for spelling, and 1 in 4 admit to regularly using abbreviations or text talk. Some practical reasons as to why this shouldn't happen in the digital age include students will always need to be able to read written information, and tests will also always include a written portion. One of the first classroom technology book which was invented in 1650. It was a wooden paddle used for printed lessons. In 1850, a pointer called the ferrule was established to utilize an education. Shortly after was the magic lantern which projected images onto glass plates so students could refer to images while learning. In 1890, the school slate was invented and used in most classrooms. The chalkboard was one of the biggest inventions technology which is still being used today. In 1900, the pencil became readily available and slowly replaced the school slate. 
In 1905, the stereoscope was a similar tool like the projector which displayed images to strengthen the delivery of lessons. In 1925, the film projector also projected images for students. Thomas Edison believed that books would soon be obsolete after this invention. Radio opened the doors for broadcasting and lessons were sent to radio stations. The overhead projector spread to most schools around the country in the U.S. in the 1930s. It was initially used for training in the military. The ballpoint pen gained recognition in 1940 when it started to be used in the classroom. The first pen went on sale in New York City on October 29, 1945 for $9.75 allowed educators to make photocopies by hand. This was a tedious and strenuous task. The headphones were introduced in 1950. Schools began to install listening stations that use headphones and audio tapes. The intention was that learning could be achieved through repeated drills. The slide rule was one of the first calculation tools before the calculator. It was developed by William Outred in, 19, in the 17th century and grew what would school be without videotapes? Developed by John Mullen and Wayne Johnson, allowed for collective images to be shown in a picture which was revolutionizing for educators and students. The reading accelerator was developed in 1957 which helped students read more effectively. This helped students turn the pages of a book. During this year, the Skinner teaching machine was also introduced. This technology followed a method of instruction. A year later, the educational television which allowed for educational programming was introduced. The photocopier was introduced in 1959 by Xerox. This technology is still being used today and most organizations plan to go paperless. For educators, this meant that resources could be delivered to students and kept on file. In 1960, was introduced. The development was like the eraser but for pens. Liquid paper, also known as whiteout, was invented by a secretary. In 1965, the film strip viewer allowed for students to watch film strips at their own pace. Some say that this development was a precursor to the iPad. The in 1970, the handheld calculator was introduced. Teachers were weary of this device because they felt it may take away from in 1972, the Scantron was developed as a teaching tool to help mark multiple choice exams. In 1980, the Plato computer was one of the earliest computers to exist in education. During this time period, there was one computer for every 92 students. Today, there is one computer for every four students. In 1985, the CD-ROM drive paved the way for flash drives and storage of documents. The calculator was also invented in 1985. It was an advanced way to solve longer math questions. Shortly after, the interactive whiteboard was created to make learning more interactive. This was a huge improvement from the traditional chalkboard. In 2005, the eye clicker allowed teachers to poll students and get results back quickly. In 2006, the XO laptop was created so students from developing countries could benefit this technology supported the one laptop per child philosophy. In 2010, the Apple iPad revolutionized education. Today, the iPad is used in most classrooms around the world. This technology helps educators transform their teaching and assist students by providing a hands-on and visual tool for learning. Thanks for watching.